Amoebas do it. Starfish do it. Dandelions do it. Butterflies do it too. So do baboons and oak trees. They all reproduce. All life continues itself by reproduction. In fact, reproduction is one of the defining properties of life. But reproduction is not just sex. From a biological standpoint, the only point of reproduction is to transmit DNA from one generation to the next. That's why reproduction results in offspring that are more or less similar to the parent organism. Organisms reproduce in two ways, asexual and sexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction generates offspring with only one parent. Cells reproduce by mitotic division and differentiate to create clones that are genetically identical to each other as well as the parent. Asexual reproduction produces very little genetic variation across generations. Any genetic variation is the result of genetic mutation. All prokaryotes and most protozoans, such as this vorticella, reproduce asexually, as do simple plants such as mosses. Many higher plants can reproduce asexually. This property is put to use by farmers and horticulturists, who use cuttings and root division to create identical plants with desirable traits. Sexual reproduction generates offspring by combining DNA from two parents. Each contribution of parental DNA is unique and different from the parents, since the DNA is reshuffled by recombination during cell meiosis. Sexual reproduction involves the union of a female sex cell, also called a gamete, with a male gamete. The male and the female gametes each provide half of the offspring's chromosomes. As a result of recombination during meiosis, each offspring is genetically different from the parents and from other offspring. Human children resemble their parents and siblings, but also differ because of the genetic basis of sexual reproduction. Scientists have been investigating sexual reproduction to understand why it is so widespread in the living world. Asexual reproduction requires less energy, is safer, and doesn't need the help of another individual. So why have species evolved to reproduce sexually? There are conflicting ideas and hypotheses. One possibility is the higher genetic variation among sexually reproducing organisms. Shuffling of genetic information during meiosis creates offspring with unique genetic combinations, so sexually reproducing populations have greater variation. This variation confers a significant evolutionary benefit. With greater genetic variation, the chances are higher that some individuals in the population can combat diseases and or cope with changing environments or diets. Since survival of individuals is more likely, such populations will be more likely to adapt over time. Another view emphasizes the role of variation in sexual reproduction in enabling resistance to diseases, bacteria, and viruses. Once a population becomes resistant to a disease, the disease evolves a new way to attack it. As a result, selection will favor mechanisms that increase genetic variation to evolve ever-changing defenses. Scientists see that beneficial variations spread faster in sexual reproduction than asexual reproduction. Perhaps the advantage of sexual reproduction is the higher rate at which beneficial traits spread, rather than the particular traits themselves. This means that sexually reproducing populations can evolve more quickly and are therefore more likely to survive the threat of disease, changes in the environment, or diet. Scientists have recently identified markers of rapid adaptation and evolution in humans. For example, people from Northern Europe have lower incidences of lactose intolerance than Southern Europeans because their populations adapted to a dairy-based diet with the rise of agriculture. Also, people of African descent have a high frequency of the genetic disorder sickle cell anemia. How did a genetic mutation spread? The sickle cell trait decreases risk of malaria which is common in Africa and has a high mortality rate. As a result, people with the sickle cell mutation survive to reproduce and the trait is rapidly passed on to the next generation. For individual organisms and from an evolutionary perspective, asexual or sexual reproduction has advantages and disadvantages. However, each type of reproduction has evolved to maximize the reproductive success of the individual organism in its specific environment.